It was not just an evening to ponder on the books presented by Professor Wale Shoinka, but an opportunity to view the images presented at this maiden exhibition of contemporary pieces at this gallery in the nation's capital, Abuja. <laughs> The event is twofold. The Nobel laureate Professor Wole Shoinka reads two of his books, Chronicles of the Happiest People on Earth and Trumpism in Academe at the Orison Art Gallery in Abuja. This is a book by a certain woman called um, Caroline Davis, African Literature and the CIA, subtitled Networks of Authorship and Publishing. Let's read what I wrote when we discovered what had been going on. What I said, nobody pretended, because the evidence was clear. These people have been infiltrating everywhere. This is now <clears throat> me quoting Madame. She says, Juliana Spar alleges that Shoinka had unusually close ties to the US government even to the point of frequently meeting with U.S. intelligence in the late 1970s. This is the most beautiful art space I've encountered in Abuja. And of course, to have the opportunity to listen to Professor Wola Shoinka is also a great honor. Of course, being, uh, the, being the first Nobel laureate uh, from the Sub-Saharan Africa and somebody that I've, I've been in, connected with for many years. And it's really been an honor and pleasure to, to listen to him speak in such a beautiful atmosphere here in, in Abuja. While that's happening on the side, the audience are treated to the works of art displayed in this gallery which grew from the passion of a private collector who decided to find a reputable place to house these amazing treasures done by different artists over time. Few of them are no longer with us. What Orisu does is it projects and communicates the rich cultural heritage that avails here in Nigeria. This kind of place, you know, it usually, you know, communicates a lot of our diverse culture. You know, so when we have these kind of dignitaries here, you know, it will communicate more, you know, to the expatriate community and to, you know, different indigents, even here in Abuja, that this is the kind of cultural heritage that we have. The collection is unique because it spans over three decades. Pieces done by some masters in the art industry are featured in sculptures as well as paintings in all shapes and sizes which have been properly preserved and restored to show that art is timeless. Without arts, without leaders supporting the arts, uh, we forget our civilization, we forget where we are coming from, we forget our culture, we forget who we are. And it is investments like this uh, that constantly reminds us about our culture, about our civilization, which is the African story, as important as any other civilization, as important as any other story. The visitors are delighted to be in an art space where appreciation for the arts can be seen with attention to detail, standards, and tradition. This is an avenue for one the physical, physical motivation, here, quote unquote, ethereal motivation, and deep, deep, deep introspection. Yes, in so to me, to me, I, I, I find this quite uh, engaging, stimulating, and reflective. And it's really good to listen to uh, intellectual uh, personalities about the problem of today. And to do so in this place, which is a place for art and culture, is, makes the event even more interesting and more valuable. So it was really very, very, uh, I enjoyed very much this evening. I think everybody enjoyed it very much. And it was a very good occasion to discuss about 
Nigeria, the part of Nigeria, and also the role of culture and art. The idea is to encourage the sector to thrive in the nation's capital so creatives can share their works with an audience who can appreciate the beauty and richness of our culture through the arts. I like such alliances between Roving Heights and the Risu Gallery, and that's what stands out on today's Double Delight episode. But things are taking a different shape when you tune in next time.